Eric Carlson just hit the 100 point mark after scoring two goals last night, becoming the first defenseman since 1992 to accomplish this feat. So Carlson becomes the sixth defenseman to hit the century mark, and the other five to do so are a collection of some of the best to ever play the game. Bobby Orr, Paul Coffey, Al McInnes, Brian Leach, Dennis Potvin. With all of that established, how does this season for Carlson stack up to some of the all-time greats? Does Carlson come remotely close to Bobby Orr? Let's dive in. So first, let's establish what Carlson's done this season. As of recording, Eric Carlson has 80 games played, 25 goals, 75 assists, 100 points. He's a minus 21. We'll get back to that in just a minute. And he's got 26 power play points. He's been the main offensive driver on a really bad San Jose Sharks team, which we will also get to later as well. Now, some of these guys that we just talked about are the best to ever do it. So does Carlson stack up to the best to ever do it since the last time this happened? The last time that anybody scored 100 points as a defenseman was 91-92, and that was Brian Leach. So since then, including that year, these are the defensemen that have hit uh, that mark, or this is their point per game average. Uh, so these are the best defensemen to do it since 91-92, including that 91-92 year from Leach. Paul Coffey has the best point per game average at 1.29, 94-95. That was with Detroit, a very stacked Detroit Red Wings team that set some records in the regular season and ultimately lost to the Devils in the finals. Brian Leach is here at 1.27 points per game. Ray Bork, 93-94, 1.26 uh, points per game, and then you have Carlson currently at 1.25 points per game. Now, the arrows indicate active players. You also have last year Roman Yossi uh, on this list at 1.20. You have two seasons from Kale McCarr right in the middle here, 1.12, 1.10. You also have 2019-20 John Carlson, uh, kind of an under-the-radar year for him where he picked up uh, above a point-per-game average, and he uh, was incredible that season. Uh, coming off of a uh, nice Stanley Cup run and then following that up with an incredible year. Uh, and then 2021-22, Victor Hedman, 1.04 points per game. And that was uh, just one of the three seasons where that team ended up going to the finals. So a lot of hockey played for Hedman. So perhaps that's why he's not a little bit higher on this list. But nonetheless, uh, these are some of the highest scoring defensemen since 91-92. Now, you'll also find... Uh, some of these players are on here multiple times. Paul Coffey's on here several times. Brian Leach has a couple different uh, appearances here. Phil Housley making an appearance a couple of times here as well. So these are some of these uh, elite level defensemen. A lot of these guys are Hall of Famers. Uh, you also have this sneaky Mike Green season here where he scored over 30 goals. Uh, so some impressive stats from some of the best in the game over the past 30 years or so. But what about the all-time numbers? How does this rank all-time? Well, defenseman points per game, all-time leaders, it's very different. You have two guys dominating the top of this list, Bobby Orr and Paul Coffey. Now, Bobby Orr, 1.78 points per game. We will probably never see that again. Uh, dare I say, because this is an incredible, incredible number. Uh, this is just raw numbers, a shade below what Connor McDavid is doing this year at 1.88 points per game. So this is an insane year for Bobby Orr, and he didn't even lead his team in scoring that year, which is insane to think about. Paul Coffey, this was the year that Gretzky hit the 215 point mark. Uh, and then you have, obviously, Bobby Orr several times, Paul Coffey several times. Uh, this uh, was a year very early on in the NHL, uh, so it's a little bit uh, of a, a sampling bias just because we went all the way back to the beginning of the NHL. Uh, a couple of these other seasons that you've seen before, Leach, Bork, Coffey, etc. And here's Eric Carlson at 1.25 points per game. But the fact that he's in this conversation Every other player on this list, except for Cameron, I'm not 100% sure about that, is a bona fide Hall of Fame defenseman. So does that mean that Eric Carlson becomes a Hall of Fame defenseman? That will be decided once he's retired, and we have a couple more years until that happens. But this is an incredible performance for Eric Carlson to be even in the same breath as some of these players. Uh, but how does this stack up? to the number one player on this list of all time, Bobby Orr. Does he even come close? Well, we can see here he's not that close. And when you look at the raw numbers for Bobby Orr, several hundred point seasons, one, two, three, four, five, 
uh, 100-point seasons, and then his prime got cut short due to injury. 11 knee surgeries played a part in that. If you look at the raw numbers, 120 points, 139, 117, 101, 122. Uh, Orr was the best defenseman to ever play the game. And one of the reasons for that is he revolutionized the position. But what does that mean statistically? You can see here the raw numbers, and they look incredible. But uh, what does that mean statistically? Surely other defensemen prior to Bobby Orr were somewhat offensive and put up some points, right? Or was everyone just a stay-at-home defenseman? Well, this is a list of the points per uh, by points by a defenseman per season uh, before Bobby Orr entered the league. So here you have the two best seasons uh, by Red Kelly. 60-61, he put up 70 points in 64 games, 20 goals, 50 assists, 1.09 points per game. If you go by the points per game, Babe Pratt in 43-44, uh, all the way over here, he had uh, the highest point per game average at 1.16 points per game, 17 goals, 41 assists, 58 points in 50 games for Toronto, two Toronto defensemen at the top of these lists. The key here is Bobby Orr's best season was 139 points in 78 games in 70-71. That was one point shy of double Red Kelly's best season. So if, for whatever reason, you took the title of this video seriously, Carlson would have to put up 278 points to achieve that level of dominance and be better than Bobby Orr, that much better than Bobby Orr, than what Bobby Orr was to the next best defenseman before he came into the league. Now, that's a solid career for most defensemen, 278 points. But eras are different, and I know none of you are going to like this, but what happens if we adjust each of Bobby Orr's 100-plus point seasons to today's level of scoring, which is 3.16 goals per game? When you do that, you see something interesting. The fact that Bobby Orr entered the league and scoring was lower than what it was today. Now, when I did this exercise with Gretzky, his points per game average was adjusted down significantly due to the massive scoring levels of the 1980s. But for Orr, the first six years of his career actually had lower scoring levels than today's NHL. So the formula to actually adjust Orr's numbers adjusted them up. So his first three seasons seem underwhelming by his standards. But when adjusted, he hits a point per game by his third season in 68-69. By his first breakout season in 69-70, the formula adjusts his point per game to 1.721. And his career high 70-71 season up to 1.804 points per game, just a shade under the 1.88 average of Connor McDavid this season, and in the realm of where Wayne Gretzky was when adjusted to 22-23 levels. Now, with Gretzky versus McDavid, the point of adjusting was to account for the increased scoring levels in the 80s and show what Gretzky's numbers would have looked like today, and to show how incredible McDavid's season has been by comparison. But with this exercise, it shows you just how truly dominant Bobby Orr was, not just for his time, but all time. Carlson's 1.25 point per game is still 0.55 points per game below Bobby Orr's best when adjusted. Oh, and despite the fact that it's an outdated stat, let me remind you that in 70-71, during that career season for Bobby Orr, he was a league record plus 124, a record that stands to this day while Carlson currently stands at minus 21, which begs the question, should Carlson win the Norris Trophy? We'll get back to that in just a minute. Whichever side you're on in that debate, maybe you would agree that it's not fair to hold anyone up to Bobby Orr for obvious reasons. So what about the other mainstay on that defenseman scoring list, Paul Coffey? Paul Coffey was number two on that graph we saw earlier with the all-time point-per-game seasons for defensemen, where he showed up seven times ahead of Eric Carlson. So here's what the raw numbers look like. Five 100-plus point seasons for Coffey, three with Edmonton and Wayne Gretzky, two with Pittsburgh and Mario Lemieux. By the way, what an incredible situation. Coffey helped Gretzky and the Oilers win three cups. Then he has a contract holdout, gets traded to Pittsburgh to play with arguably the second best player of all time in Mario Lemieux, wins another cup in 91 with the Penguins, then goes on to play with several more Hall of Fame players like Iserman, Larionov, Lindros, etc., uh, so an incredible career for Paul Coffey. But did those players make Coffey great or did Coffey make them great? So both Gretzky and Lemieux put up their highest career point totals while playing with Paul Coffey. Coffey also holds the league record for goals by a defenseman with 48, breaking Bobby Orr's previous record of 46. 
So whatever you think about Coffey, there is no denying he's one of the best to ever play, one of the best skating defensemen to ever play, and deserves his spot in the Hall of Fame without question. Now, Coffey did, however, play most of his prime in the 1980s when scoring was massively inflated, a topic I covered in more detail in the Gretzky vs. McDavid video. So what do Coffey's point-per-game numbers look like when we specifically adjust them to 22-23 levels? So what you see here in orange are the raw numbers, and what you see in blue are the adjusted levels to 22-23 specifically, not error adjusted, just adjusted to the scoring levels that we see in the league this year. Now, things are still very impressive for the Hall of Fame blue liner. We're not going to stay here too long, but you can see the real point per game uh, is incredibly high. 1.747, essentially 1.75 point per game is his career high in 85-86. He also had 13 total seasons above a point per game in the raw numbers and seven seasons above Carlson's current point per game average of 1.25. But let's look at just the adjusted numbers to get a better comparison to Carlson. So when we do that, this line right here is Eric Carlson's year this season. So when you look at these numbers, it's still impressive. Coffee outpaces 22-23 Carlson four times and comes within a whisker of that 1.25 two other times as well. So up until this point in the video, what Carlson is doing is being diminished by these legends, which suggests that maybe Carlson isn't quite where their games at the all-time uh, best defenseman in the league. And I would concede that just from eye test alone. But uh, here's something to consider. These are the career season highs for each defenseman ahead of Carlson on the point per game graph we saw earlier and what their scoring looked like compared to the rest of their team. Or somehow finished 13 points behind Esposito in his record-setting 70-71 campaign. Uh, Coffee finished 77 points behind Gretzky's career high and league record 215 points in 85-86. Potvin finished 33 points behind Trache and 25 points behind Mike Bossy in 78-79 as the Islanders' dynasty was rounding into shape. Al McKinnis missed out on the team lead in scoring by one point to Theo Fleury. Leach trailed Mark Messier by five in 91-92. Bork finished 21 points behind Adam Oates and never had a 100-point season in his Hall of Fame career. But then look at Carlson. At the time of recording, he's 33 points ahead of second place Logan Couture on his team. Now, this isn't quite Bobby Orr doubling up on Red Kelly, but it is definitely impressive, and it will help Carlson's Norris case. Speaking of, we mentioned twice already that Carlson's a minus 21, so should that preclude him from winning the Norris Trophy? After all, it's a trophy for the best defenseman, not the best offensive defenseman. And side note, Wayne Gretzky has even hypothesized that maybe we need another defenseman uh, trophy called the Bobby Orr Trophy for the best offensive defenseman. And obviously these stats would indicate that he would be the perfect person to put uh, as the name and face of that trophy. But nonetheless, six Norris Trophy winners have had a negative plus minus, only one of them in the salary cap era. That is Nick Lidstrom in 2010-2011. Now, it's interesting to note here that the two years that Red Kelly had the most points by a defenseman before Bobby Orr entered the league, he didn't win the Norris Trophy either time. Doug Harvey won one of his seven Norris Trophies in 60-61, the same year that Kelly put up 70 points in 64 games, the most for a defenseman at that time. And Pierre Pilote won in 62-63 when Kelly put up 60 points in 66 games that season. But both of Carlson's Norris Trophy seasons had him towards the bottom of the plus-minus list in terms of Norris seasons all time. But should he win it this year, he'd be the worst-ranked plus-minus defenseman to ever win the trophy. Now, I get it. Plus-minus is an outdated stat. But what do you think? Do you think Carlson is the front-runner for the Norris? Should he definitely win it? If Carlson does win it, he'd have three Norris trophies in his trophy case, which would rank him tied for fifth most all time, alongside Chris Chelios, Paul Coffey, Dennis Potvin, and Pierre Pelot. But is there someone who had a better, more complete defensive season that deserves it over Carlson's Hall of Fame caliber season offensively? Whatever you think, let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.